this is Dominic, wedding DJ. And this is Serena, wedding planner. And together we are the, the wedding, wedding duo. duo. We are here to talk all things weddings. Planning a wedding can be stressful, but we are here to help. So before you say, that's it, we're going to Vegas, don't go to Vegas. Let's have some fun. Join us as we answer your wedding questions and help navigate planning one of the biggest days of your life with The, the wedding, wedding Duo. duo. It is officially podcast o'clock, and here we are. We're back. We are back for episode 31 of the Wedding Duo podcast. Welcome. If you're new, thank you for joining. If you binge-watched, binge-watched, let's try that again. Is that a thing? If you're new, thank you for joining. If you binge listened to all of our episodes, we appreciate y'all. Um, but they we're binge watch. We put them on YouTube. You could watch all of them if you wanted to. You could absolutely. You could binge watch <laughs> our episodes on YouTube. That's a good point. Um, but we're here today to talk about something that we've created that's been super valuable to couples. And if you follow us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you know we talk a lot about music, right? And why do we talk a lot about music? Because it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> but also because you're a wedding DJ. And oh, yeah, that too. You, <laughs> that is your specialty, is suggesting songs, talking about the timing involved, and all those pieces. So a lot of that is why we've been successful, is because you're really good at describing those things. Well, that's the essence of what a thousand planning meetings. I've planned you know, literally a thousand weddings with, with couples. And, uh, and that's what we do. We go through and like, okay here's the songs we need to pick, right? We need mm -hmm. a ceremony music. We need introduction music. We need first dance. We need parent dances. And over the years, like I have a bunch that I've suggested, but then there's people will bring you new music, new artists. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's such a beautiful song. It's such a perfect song, such an epic song. And I put it on my playlist. So it's not, it's not just me compiling this list. It's me with the help of a thousand couples that have gotten yes. married over the past for, 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 for 10 years. Um, <laughs> Many years. And so it's just like, once social media took off and we took off on you, uh, TikTok and, and social media, and I was just like, there's so much. That's when I started sharing all this stuff because I'm like, it's, a hard, it's hard to come up with this. It's hard to remember every song you've ever listened mm -hmm. to over the, your lifetime and find the perfect one that just fits the two of you. But it's great. It's so much fun. I really enjoy doing it. Yes. I enjoy when we're searching for that song, that perfect song for the couple, and we find it and they're like, oh, that's, that's the, one. the I go, one. It is. That is the one for yes. you. And so if you're out there and music has come up in your wedding planning journey, mm -hmm. and I, as I'm sure it has, um, we have uh, not only our posts that you see on TikTok and Instagram where we highlight certain songs, but we also have a music planner, which <laughs> is not form. visible yeah. on this oh, camera was, right now. An angle. Um, and what it is, is it's a downloadable form for purchase in our shop. And you can kind of fill in the significant songs that are needed throughout the day. And we also give song suggestions. So on today's podcast, we're going to talk about our favorite suggestions from the music planner for you. How hard. I mean, this was hard for me. It was hard. We we did this like a week or so ago, and we went through and we highlighted our picks, our top picks in each category. I need to don my reading devices. So here it is. We are cracking open. So just real quick. So the first couple pages of the music planner um, are just, like she said, like, what songs are you probably looking for? And how many people say, how many do I need for my ceremony? Like, right. well, it depends. Start with three. One to get everybody else up to the altar. One for the bride. Traditionally gets her own song. And then after you say I do, a recessional song. But you can do more, but it kind of just gets you started, right? And then first dances, parent dances. So speaking of the ceremony, that's where we're going to start. Whew, get ready. ready. So part of this is from, we were just talking before we like started the podcast that some people think like, oh, don't I have to use Here Comes the Bride? And I go, oh, no, please don't. It's not, I mean, <laughs> you can use it, of course, but it's not good. <laughs> I mean, Canon and D is still used a lot because it's beautiful. And there's a million versions of Canon and D by Pachelbel, but but you don't have to use it. You don't have to be traditional in that sense. No. Maybe the church has some saying and you have to use their... I was going to say, so we are talking about music that's generally used outside of a church setting. Because if yeah. you're getting married in a church, there's usually some parameters, not only to what songs you can use, but also who's doing the music, right? So a lot of times they'll have a, a, an organ player or a keyboardist, or they'll let you bring in like a, a vocalist too. Um, but those songs are going to usually reflect the denomination of the religion that you're and whatever the person can play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
True. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever's in their repertoire, if you will. Like I'm an acoustic guitar player. I can't play Toccata and Fugue in D minor. Like, no. Is oh. that, it's been done. There's I don't a guy even know what YouTube, that is. If you look it up, it's unbelievable. He's playing like a six string Spanish guitar. It's unbelievable. Anyway, okay. I like that, that piece. Okay. So the ceremony is one that we break down a lot more. And it's not just what song, but where in the song. So we're not getting into all that. But the music planner has that. That has like this song started here or whatever that's all in there especially for the yes. introduction songs as well because sometimes when you want to be introduced or you want to be whatever there's a part in the song or you're recessional after you say i do there's a part in the song that i listed on here like "Ooh, i would start it right at 119 because that's right when it goes mm -hmm. boom and that crescendo hits and it just really is awesome so because in those moments like for the bride's entrance for your introduction for your recessional you're probably not going to get like the full song or you want to highlight a portion of that yep. song for a certain moment and that's why he puts the timing on there so that you can tell your dj or if your friend's doing the playlist um you know let's start it right at this point point. and once you're like for the first time presenting as husband and wife uh the crowd cheers too so you need a song that's gonna be like woo, like goes over big, the crowd right yeah. i mean that's just i mean that you're kind of like well yeah but i mean but yeah some people pick a really slow song and i'm like well that's not it gets drowned out you know right so okay, anyway, so we're starting with ceremony. Let's go back to that. So for the ceremony, our for the, favorites. So, so if you're heading down the aisle, um, we're gonna give a special shout out to Eddie James at last because we we named the company after that one. Yes. And this one, like at the beginning, was like me, 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 and then she starts singing at last, right when you kick the doors open, right there. Oh my gosh! So that's your favorite bride's entry. No, it's not my favorite. Oh. It just holds a special place this in my heart like... because that's kind of where it all started. Was that song years ago? Okay. A bride said, can we open the doors right at that last? And I go, yeah. And when I saw it in action, I'm like, oh my God, that True. was epic. And if you didn't know, our company here in San Antonio is called At Last Entertainment. So shout out, Etta. We love yeah. You. So my favorite, again, this is be for the bride going down the aisle. And I had uh, the one by Coda Line highlighted, but then I forgot. And this we're updating this recently. Um or we're going to update it here in the near future. But Forrest Black wasn't on there. And If You Love Her by Forrest Black. Come on. I mean, it's so pretty. It is. And he actually, we did that song as a TikTok. And he commented and said, I have to agree with everything this man says. Oh, my gosh. That's so exciting, right? When the artist comments on one of our TikToks, it's so cool. And there were a bunch of people that said, like, oh, I'm using this. And he replied, like, thanks for the love. He, like, went I mean, through, yeah. He it went was through really the whole great. thing and, like, replied to a bunch of people. Okay. So mine, we're going to go with. My favorite for a bride's entrance is, yes, this is so true, uh, Feels Like Home by Chantel Krebiazic. And I would have picked that one, but I can't say her last name ever. So <laughs> it just has this like. Oh, she's it, it's amazing. Personal, yeah, it's personal to me because honestly, like that's kind of how I feel about this man sitting next to me. Um, always just like whenever he's around or I feel like I need him in certain moments, it just. Yeah, it feels like home. Well, that's nice of you to say. <laughs> it's true. You didn't feel like that on the drive-in. We're having a bit of a discussion. Well, so, we're also business always. partners. So. 24 hours a day, yeah. Okay, we're going to do, this is the only category we're going to do one more because there's a whole section on country music and we're in Texas. True. So. Am I going first? You go first. So if you're, this is a bride's entrance if you're looking for a country entrance song. Because Texas. From the ground up, Dan and Shay. That is my my selection from our list. Um, first of all, Dan and Shay are phenomenal. And that song just really, again, hits home because it's like how you built this relationship, especially if you've been engaged maybe for a while or you've been together for a while and yeah. now you're just getting married. Lyrically, it's That just song lyrically makes a lot of sense. Speechless is great too. Everyone knows Speechless. But if you listen sure. to the two of them, it's hard to not go, yeah, no, from the ground up. Is it works so well. Uh, and I'm going to go with Better Together by Luke Combs because mm. that song is also very simple. And I like when the bride's going down the aisle or using it. It could be the groom going down the aisle also or the wedding party. But when it's really a simple song, meaning it's just a, a beautiful artist singing with just a guitar, just a piano. And it can build. But when it's those songs that start that way, because I almost went with uh, I Get to Love You by Ruel, which is another beautiful song. True. Because it starts just so simple with her beautiful voice. Um, but Luke Combs, and I always use the second verse. This is where... Because the first verse talks about BB guns and beer cans on a fence and mm -hmm. a, a, a boat and the motor that's in the boat, right? So very male, these things go better together. But the second verse talks about um, a coffee cup with your lipstick stain on it yeah. and uh, 
my first name with your no your first name with my last name that right. kind of stuff and it's just it talks more about the so we, it's three very defined um courses basically or uh verses verses the first one talks about male boy stuff together the second verse talks about a couple together so again this would be one you could start at the second verse because mm -hmm. it's a very clean break in the song um and you wouldn't even know unless you really knew the song that that was the second verse it would sound like the beginning so very true there you go. so those are our selections for bridal entrances now i'm going to reiterate this this music planner is available for download in our shop and there are a lot more choices than the ones we just listed um but we're going to move on where are we going now so we have one more category because the ceremony is so there's so oh, much we do. okay we one more category uh and this is if you are a movie soundtrack buff that's another whole category. Honestly. Okay. And this is a bride's entrance for bride's the movie entrance. soundtrack? Or a groom's entrance, because one of them is Concerning Hobbits, Lord of the Rings, which if your groomsman and your groom walk out to this, first of all, they may be Lord of the Rings fans or just true. They may be gamers or they may be Dungeons and Dragons player, or you may be, right? Two, two of our DJs that are on our team, including one of our female, <laughs> they dress up and they play Dungeons and Dragons. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Susie and Daniel, if I threw that out there. <laughs> now I said their names. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Now everyone knows. Um, but it's so great. But for me, if somebody is old school and they go back and use the Princess Bride once upon a time. Okay. Oh, my God. People rarely do it. But that sound. That, it's that, because that movie's old. <laughs> it's old, but it's also timeless. Um, and it's like, been, it's one of the best rom-coms of all time. That movie. Come on. Um, Give me. But give me mine to read my selection because we highlighted. Where did we highlight? I forget. I'm down here in this section. Oh, okay. The Forrest Gump theme was what good. I selected. Yes, because I remember so well watching that movie in the feather, right? That's, that's when the it, part. <laughs> that's when and that plays. So pretty. And as you mentioned earlier, it's such a simple, just sweet melody. The pace is really good. Um, and yeah, it it really is a wonderful piece of music, even if you don't recognize it from the movie, because again, the movie's really old. Um, it's still just a beautiful song. Uh, well, you'd scratched out Harry Potter with Forrest Gump, because Harry Potter works really well, too. True. You know what's weird? I was laying last night with our daughter. She was trying to get to sleep because she's our night owl. And I was just scrolling through social media. And that scene at the end, right before Jenny dies in Forrest Gump, came up. And I'm like, and I literally turned, oh, wow. I was playing music, trying to get her to go to sleep. And I stopped it and I played the song. It's the part where she goes, Forrest, were you scared in Vietnam? And he's like, no. Well, sometimes it would stop raining long enough for the star to come out. And then it was nice. It was just, I mean, that's just such a great scene. I is mean, this, sad, this is such sad a when Jenny, Sad when Jenny dies. But that part right there. He loves his movies. If you guys didn't know this about my husband, million sparkles. he has know, all these movie scenes just like they locked play in, in my head brain. over and over again. Okay, so after you're married and they say, presenting for the first time, that's the recessional, right? That's like when you really want to pick a big song at a good moment. Um, and we're going to give a shout out to the classics. This will be Natalie Cole. That's a classic. Sign Seal Delivered, Stevie Wonder. Never go wrong with that one. Um, you Make My Dreams Come True, Hall of Notes. Great one right there. But what were our favorites? Here we go. No matter where you are, us the duo. Hello. So that is from... What do they play that? Book of Life. A Book of original. Life. Yeah, that's right. That move, the animated movie. And I loved it in the movie, but even separate from that, the lyrics, um, just like no matter where you are, I'm there with you, yeah. right? Even if we're not together, like. And they actually have a wedding version that mm -hmm. is a slower version because the lyrics are beautiful. If you don't know that song, look it up. Us, the duo is the group, uh, no matter where you are. But there's a slower wedding version that you can use. To go down the aisle. Yes. And I, I did this TikTok once where it's like, you can use the first, the slow one to go down the aisle and then the actual one to come off of the aisle. Come on. It works. Off, off the aisle, off the altar. Um, it's great when you can have those bookends like that, right? That's really cool. Uh, so I had originally had Love Me Like You Do by Ellie Goulding because at the end there where she goes, what are you waiting for? Bam, yeah. love me like you. I mean, it's a fantastic, it big recessional. And it just, people just, it takes their breath away when they're like, Presenting for the first time as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Goulding, what are you waiting for? Oh, yeah. man, it's a good moment. Wow, it's and a you good sing moment. it so well. Thanks. I hit mm -hmm. those high notes. But <laughs> but then I remember there's a, I can't even pronounce his name very well. Niall Horan has a song called Black and White. Yes. At 31 seconds, the lyrics are perfect. The song is, and I love it when somebody grabs a song that's not used too much, just because, I mean, we're in the wedding industry. We see a lot of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're classics. They work. If you love Natalie Cole's song, go with Natalie Cole. 
But that one's a little more. Some people are looking for a song. I want a song that's not used very often. Exactly. And that is one. Black and white. Look it up. It's really pretty. So if, if, you could you could start at the beginning, but right at thirty one seconds, where she he says, "I see you all dressed in white." Oh, it's really good. It is good. And if you guys don't have your like pen and paper out right now, I'm going to tell you to get it out so that you can write down these suggestions. <laughs> well, it's a podcast. Or you can, play it back. you can play it back, or you can go and download the music planner. So black and white. Dressed in White is a Cal song. That's a different one. All right, are you ready to go on? Ready to go on. I messed up the lyrics. Next favorite. Introductions. The recessional song, After You Say I Do, and the introduction song for the couple are very interchangeable. A lot of times you're like, oh man, I can't decide which one to use. I'm like, right. well, we still need an introduction song. If you're indecisive, put one of them as your recessional, After You Say I Do, and put the other one as we introduce the couple into the room. Because right. that's a very, um, it's a great moment. And we often look for songs in these two categories that have that good crescendo, right? That big moment in the song. So you can just like, especially for the introduction into the reception, like rip the roof off. Everyone's on their feet, clapping. You're just so excited for you to be introduced. So, so let's do, so it's not just a couple. Usually we do the wedding party and then we do the couple. Yes. So I have to have two songs. For the wedding party, I went with High Hopes, Panic at the Disco. Don't panic. <laughs> but it's so... I don't know, like... There's so many on this. This is like one of the biggest categories. I was going to say, that has a ton of options, and it was really hard to decide. But you did that TikTok on this song, and it really, like, anytime I play it, it gets me energized. So, of course, I had to go with that. And I threw... And again, this, there's so many on this list for the wedding party. And we have even broke it down, too. If you want to bring your girls in together, there's a section for that. You want to bring your guys in together, there's a section for that. But there's a bigger section for the wedding party together. And so what was yours? Mine was a classic one-hit wonder from back in the 80s. Katrina and the Waves, because I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> I don't know that they're going to get that from that, hey, yeah, that, it <laughs> from starts that with rendition. Dun, 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 dun. It's really fun. Uh, and again, Check if you're it looking out. for an 80s stuff, that's like a, it's a classic. I didn't want to throw out the obvious ones. but No, I think it's, it's really cute and fun, and your grandparents will recognize it. <laughs> but, the, but for the couple, this has got to be. Okay, next category, right. The couple being introduced. That's, okay, so this is. I did a recent um, video on this where I called it the, the Frankie Valley duo, where I used, uh, oh, what a night for the wedding party. Mm -hmm. And then we switched to, here it is, drum roll, can't take my eyes off of you. Right at 119, where it's like, um, uh, where I'm like, I kind of start with, uh, yeah, and I go, are we ready for the bride and groom? I said, are we ready for the bride and groom? Keep it going. And I go, here they are, that's husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Valley. And it's like, I love, I love you, baby. baby. Yep. And everybody can't stand but just lose their mind and sing so, along. Yeah. And it's just so good. Okay, what was mine? Where's mine? Favorite artist of hers. Oh, yeah, Riri. We found love. Yeah, because a lot of times. Because you did, I'm guessing. I'm like a lyric person, so I like really um, identify really with the lyrics in a song. And so, again, I'm going to bring this up again. Um, kind of that song for me talks about like when maybe you were in a bad place in your life and you found someone that you rose out of that together. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what I think of when I think of that song. Stronger as a couple kind of a thing. Absolutely. Not to say that you're not a strong woman by yourself, but you know. Right. Whoever you are out there that's like, I don't need a man to complete me. I, yes, I know. Well, I'm if they're sorry, on I'm our podcast, trying, I'm, I'm not trying they to may say probably have not, a man. But, yeah, but, but plus, that's a great song. It just builds really well. It does. And it kind of gets, because I like to start it before as I'm introducing, like, are oh, we ready for the bride and groom? And we have one that like, me, 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 me. And Riri starts saying, we not love you. They're going to turn this episode off listening no, not. to your it's singing. Fantastic. They're going to turn it up <laughs> and say, actually, his version is better. Um, oh. So. I did it. We have a section. This is not a massive section because it's the cake song. Because some people are like, do I have to pick a cake song? No, you don't. don't a lot of times to. you don't even realize that you picked that song. They just think I'm playing another song. But we threw in a couple. Um, I'm a huge Beatles fan. And one that gets used occasionally is When I'm 64, which is Cute. such a sweet song. Because it talks about, are you still going to love me when I'm old and gray? That's basically the song. And uh, and it talks about, if you don't know, it's it's a great song. But it's a great, plus it's kind of toe tappy. Yes. Where's mine? But there's a lot you can usually people oh, yeah. like one with something sweet in it. I've done Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith. How about How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You, Marvin Gaye? So good. Marvin Gaye is the best one, but it, James Taylor covered it. Buble covered it. It's just a great I mean, pick just your artist. The, That's kind of a good thing about that one. 
the fact that it references how sweet you're cutting the cake, it works. Sugar pie, honey bunch is another one. People like to put sugar in there somewhere. Rihanna has a cake song. Cake, cake. cake. Yeah, no, I think that's a little much. People pick it, but it, yeah, it's a bit much. They definitely know you pick that song if I play that it's one. It's overpowering the moment. Okay, we're going to skip a major one here because obviously, usually there's a first dance between the two of you. Right, but there's However, a reason. It's so personal. It's so hard. All the songs we mentioned at the beginning, the processional for the bride, those are beautiful first dance songs. True. So that's kind of like the, the list you could look on. But it's personal. It's really hard. If you want to dance to... Baby Shark, if that's your song, knock yourself out, right? I mean, it's, I mean, that would be an odd selection, but it's your day. It's your song. Yeah, and that's kind of why we don't have a section for that because it is. It's a personal choice. It's going to be different for every couple. A lot of times you have a song, but even if you don't, like you mentioned, um, that first list that it talks about bride's entrance songs, a lot of times those work Oh, they're well. all from the ground up. Speechless, all, the, all yeah. in the country section. Um, and one thing while we're talking about it is really cute is... Um, if you're if you found a first dance song, but you haven't found a song for the bride to process to, uh, or they're using the ceremony, if you go on YouTube and you type in your first dance and you type in instrumental afterwards, you may find a beautiful instrumental version of your first dance mm -hmm. that you can use in your ceremony. And talk about having your bookends, right? It's a great, beautiful callback when you go down the aisle to an instrumental version of Can't Help Falling in Love, and then you use the actual song or the Kina Granis song version or a Haley Reinhardt version. For your first dance, right? It's just a beautiful way to be like, oh, you use the instrumental version, now you use the actual. It's really cute. You love that kind of stuff. I love that kind of stuff. It's really, yes. I'm not, I'm in the weeds here, people. We are deep in the weeds. All right, we're getting into parent dances. Here we go. Uh, these and are we right are next parents. To each other on the, they're right next to each other on the list. The ones we chose. Hmm? Okay. Am I so going you first? Chose, yeah. Here you we and go. Your dad actually danced to this one. This is true. When I had my wedding the first time around, uh, my dad and I danced. Danced. To Father and Daughter by Paul Simon. And the reason I like this song, not only because we picked it, and obviously I liked it, um, it's a little more toe-tappy. It's a little upbeat. So you can, like, if you're comfortable dancing that way with your dad. Um, <laughs> People don't want to ugly cry. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, if you're close like, with your dad, there's a lot of songs that just get you right in the feels. Exactly. It's not, like, overly emotional. So that's kind of why I selected that song and why I like it so much. Speaking of. Go for it. I mean, I'm an emotional train wreck because I cry all the time with these songs. But the one just and I don't, in general, I don't he know, cries. The one I always envision someday if I'm dancing with our, lip, our Lily is Cinderella by Stephen Curtis Chapman. But God, how could I even begin? I can't listen to it now when I'm sitting by myself. He can't even talk office. about it. He's crying right now. I'm not. I'm yes, not. you are. I'm you not. absolutely are no, tearing because up. I, it's a very powerful song. It's a beautiful song. And the story behind it is, will break your heart too. But he has a, an acoustic version. But that's one of the times where the actual version is. Perfect. It's like it's it works really well. But again, there's a huge list of songs for parent dances. For parent dances, correct. And we have there's the categories. We have bride and dad, groom and mom, bride and mom, and then there's a whole another hundred plus. Uh, I think there's like ninety five songs of just others because sometimes people are dancing with stepdad mm -hmm. and then stepdad, or your your uncle is dancing with you, or your grandfather, or your Brother. sister, or your aunt, or yeah. somebody else, or a sibling maybe. Um. Did I say that? Yes, you said sister. I said brother, and then you said or a sibling. That's its own category. We're getting old. <laughs> or a stepchild too. Sometimes people are dancing with right uh, a, a child from a, form, a future relationship, maybe your own a child, future relationship, a former relationship, um, or a uh, or it's your own child. Maybe you have a child that you want to dance with your son. Um, and there's a lot of songs that work for that. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned the father and the bride category. Let's do mom and groom. Let's go for it. Your, Where are we? It continues on to this Yes. Side so if I ever get a chance <clears throat> to dance with one of my sweet boys, I would hope they would pick Boy by Lee Bryce. Oh my I tried God. playing. When this song came out, I played it for her. And I was like, listen to this song. And she was like, stop, turn it off, stop, turn it off. She, <laughs> she actually started crying. I am I not a crier, but when it comes to my kids, right, that's where it hits me. So well, that song nailed it. We Oof. have two boys and that song makes me cry too. So there you go. But that's not a surprise, though. The one that just gets me, and I talk about it all the time, uh, it's called When You're My Age by Lori McKenna. Lori spelled L O R I, McKenna. And it's, uh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's just really written really well. But you know what I stumbled onto that I know that? Lori McKenna covered Humble and Kind, the yeah. Tim McGraw song, which is a great song for a parent dance or for another dance. 
But if you want it from a woman's perspective, she sings it. It's the same song. Right. Not that you have to do that. So just keep in mind, like, it doesn't matter. Like, if you're a mom dancing with your son, it doesn't have to be a female artist singing, right? You could use the Tim McGraw version of that song. Absolutely. um, That's the one you highlighted, actually, (laughs) for the next one, for the other category. Oh, okay. So let's move on to that. So in the other category, and we already kind of talked about what that is, meaning if you're dancing with someone other than your biological parent, um, Humble and Kind by Tim McGraw. Great song. The message, again, we're going to get back to the lyrics here, um, is just, you know, your wish for that person to be a good person. Um, And that really fits a number of categories. Like, say your stepdad entered your life maybe later in life. Um, He's still important to you, but he probably does, you know, I'm guessing, have those wishes for you that you uh, grow up and that you continue to be uh, humble and kind. A a good person, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? So we're going back to the Beatles for this one, the other category. Uh, In My Life by the Beatles is... Is your selection. Fabulous. It works for all sorts of different... I've had a lot of times with the the groom and mom dance to that one, but this one is in the other category because it works for that really well. But some other ones, I'll just throw out a few other ones real quick. You can do some classic stuff like Louis Armstrong, What a Wonderful World, Benny King, Stand By Me. I Hope You Dance, Leon Womack is in that category. And Celine, Because You Love Me, I almost picked Celine. I'm not As much as I love Celine, the Beatles beat her out. Sorry, Celine, wherever you are. (laughs) Up north in Canada. Okay. Okay, so one of the things that one of my favorite uh, events to do at a wedding is the anniversary dance. If you don't know what it is, the anniversary dance, I invite all the married couples onto the dance floor. And then uh, I usually let the song start a little bit. And then I say, if you've been married less than six hours, please leave the dance floor. Less than six hours. People are like, why would you start? Oh, <laughs> and the bride and groom walk off like, eh, okay, thank you. And they, we kick them off. And then I a little bit more music play. And then I go less than five years, less than 10 years, less than 15 years. And you get all the way up to your most senior married couples. And it's a great way to highlight the couples that have made it 45, 50 right. years, right? It's really beautiful. And then sometimes we'll ask them for advice and they're like, uh, never go to bed angry or whatever they say. Stay up all night and fight. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to have a long song okay. for this one because otherwise Let I'm racing through the song like five years, 10 years, 15 years. So uh, these songs that are on this list and this category are not only lyrically appropriate, but also they're, they they're, long, they're long, long enough for your DJ for to, to get through the, through yeah. yeah. So I selected, I don't want to miss a thing, Aerosmith. Because I'm an Aerosmith fan, or I was long ago. I mean, you can still say you're a fan, even though they haven't. They kind of got weird. <laughs> they were always weird, but they're still good artists, right? right? I mean, yeah, it's a whole other category, another whole conversation. But it's a great one. It is a good song. It was a great movie, too, speaking of movies. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the movie? The one where they're up in the space shuttle? <laughs> yes, I don't remember Armageddon. it. Armageddon, that's right. Uh, um, so I picked... It's a country one. Remember when by Alan Jackson, Mm -hmm. because it just talks about benchmarks through life. Remember when we were young, we didn't have any money. Remember when the kids were growing up. Remember when they were, yeah, they got, it was just a great one, especially when you have your parents and your grandparents out there. Exactly. They have had those benchmarks. So it's a very appropriate song. Because those are, we have all these generations out there. It's really, is a powerful moment if you take a step back and look, because it could be like three generations on your wedding day, your parents and your grandparents were out there. And you're all sharing a slow dance together. That's that's it heavy. It that's is. heavy stuff right there. Something we recommend, though, if you're considering doing the anniversary dance, make sure you have the married people in the family, right? So you want to kind of consider. If everyone's divorced, <laughs> maybe you don't do that. You want to consider who would be left, right? So it's just something to think about. Because it is. Because the other thing is, we're going to talk about the bouquet and gardener now. A lot of people don't do that because, of, well, they're like, one, they think it's cringe, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Some people say, "All my, I'm the last one of my friends to get married. We don't have any single friends. True. Nobody's going to be Which out there except point. the flower girl. But the other thing you could do, if you really want to throw your bouquet, because you can do your bouquet without the garter, because that's usually the one people are sometimes. They don't want to do the garter, yeah. The the trend is going away from it a little bit more. But you can still do it. Of course, it's really fun. But I've had it sort of like, none of my friends are are single. I'm like, well, let's just bring out all the ladies. All the ladies come on the dance floor. Mm -hmm. Because there's always an aunt that's like, I haven't caught a bouquet in 20 years. I'm going out. And when you say all the ladies, I mean, if you've got 200 guests, right, we're not, and half of them are female, not everyone will come out. Right. No, so we don't sure. invite like your entire guest count or half of it onto the dance floor. So don't worry about that. Okay. So mine for the bouquet was, oh my gosh. Yes, of course. I remember this now. Uh, man, I feel like a woman, Shania Twain, because you can't go wrong with Shania, especially here in Texas. Let's go, girls. The country girls, it just gets them. Well, usually this category is already filled in and they have one. They go, oh, we're going to do uh, Milkshake by Kelly. I go, oh, that's a great one. I go, 
because here I thought you would have picked Shania. They go, oh, I forgot about Shania. No, we're doing Shania. <laughs> and I have to scratch it out. And it happens all the time here it in Texas. Does. They forget. Um, I've never used Beyonce single ladies, you know that? Mm. No, I'm just kidding. I've used it a thousand times. <laughs> it hits the nail on the head. It still works. It still comes up. But that People is not your it. selection. That is not my selection. Um, well, <laughs> so I like a song that's going to get the girls out there. Like, let's go, girls, right? That's a Shania works great. Uh, Hollaback works great. Glamorous works great. If you remember some Fergie songs. Um, Hips Don't Lie, maybe. But the one that is hysterical is, I don't know how to edit it. It's a ludicrous song. Move, beep, get out the way, get out the <laughs> Which way. Which is actually beep, get out the way. In on several occasions, and it can oh, be it's really so funny. funny. And the edited version, Obviously, that's what I usually that's when we would use. It, Luda requace, re, replaces the B word with a girl screaming like you're pulling their hair. Ah! So like move, ah, and it's oh my <laughs> god, it is so, so funny. Funny. It also gets everybody out there shaking their money maker because they, you know, that's always really fun you want the girls out there doing their thing right so next will be the garter. garter okay so if you do decide to do the garter um the one that i recommend is because i love justin timberlake always have always will suit and tie it's a good one it is a good a little one. more classy right a little more classy than pony <laughs> do you want to have your magic mike magic justin out there so on a side note two years ago mm -hmm. jt came to town and i bought tickets because i knew she was a fan and uh, she, he was on her left side and I was on the stage was on her left. I was on my wife's right. And I, at one point when he came on stage, I was like, Hey, it's kind of cool that she was like, can you not with the, I go, Oh, I'm <laughs> okay, sorry. But let me, Are you and Justin having a moment here? Because I'm like, I'm sorry. She, I was head, just trying to see you because we were so <laughs> far up into the rafters. First of all, I was just trying they to were, tickets were popular. It was hard to get tickets. <laughs> We were so far away. I couldn't see it. But him. she was having a moment with her and Justin, and I mm -hmm. was interrupting it, reminding her that she was married to me at the moment. <sighs> it's all good. I pouted. Anyway, I like to go a different direction with a classic. I think it's really fun to do like a, all right, the next item to be thrown, our bride has on our person, and there's no one that's going to help the na the groom now. And I'll play wow, 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 some Marvin Gaye. Let's get it on. Okay. Oh, my God. It's so fun. It's such a different direction. People instantly recognize that song but it's also the reason people choose not to do the garden uh, yeah but it's you really are fun. like highlighting the cringe factor using that song but it's but if you're okay with it and that's what you want to do yeah then more power to you and if your groom really wants to do like come on just sit down it's it's yeah. all in good fun you're officially married there so your grandma can't get that mad <laughs> but if you have a really conservative side of the family that's maybe not to consider. Like yeah. that song okay so at the end of the night it's, I would say, usually that last hour, let's say, or less or more, mm -hmm. I'm usually catering to the younger gen, the, the, the couple and their peers. It's usually a little more current, a little more gangsta, grunt, grunt, not grunge, crunk. That's the word I'm Wow. For. I was like, I was where are we grunge, going? Not grunge, crunk, um, or whatever. Just, you know, we're trying to be a little bit really dancing. And sometimes your parents and your grandparents aren't dancing during that time. It's great when they are. But the last song of the night, where I'm like, we have time for one more, everybody. Let's get everybody on the dance floor. I like to go back to a timeless song. Sometimes the sing-alongs are great because I want everybody out there singing along at the top of their lungs. And my favorite, um, of course, is Sweet Caroline. Right. And Even though I hear it so much. And people say it's cliche, right? But there's a reason it works is because the upper generations, everybody knows it and it will bring them out to be part of that last moment there of the event. And so it's a good one to use, right? And sing-alongs are not intimidating. They're, people want to come out. They don't feel like they have to dance, but they all know how to go. Ba, ba, ba. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's just, it's it's very conducive to get everybody on the dance floor, just like I asked. And you get great pictures. And even if people haven't been dancing, but they come out for one line, and they do, people really listen to that. They'll come mm -hmm. out and they'll be like, come on out, join the bride and groom. And you guys are in the middle while everyone else is like, sweet Caroline. It's right up there with... Uh, don't Stop Believing and Friends in Low Places are the other ones, but of those three, that's my favorite. Go ahead, right, you have one. and I'm about to read mine. I've had the time of my life from I Dirty forget, Dancing. Dirty Dancing, right? Because you've had the time of your life. That is best day ever, right? Your wedding day. Again, I'm going back to the lyrics. It works. It does work. Although there's always somebody that scoots back to the other side of the dance floor and somebody else is like, here we go, ready. They're going to do, do the, the lift. lift. Oh, and no. they start running. And I'm always like, oh, God. We're going don't to the, end ER. the night with a 
with a with an ambulance showing up. On the, Absolutely, let's be careful, everybody. Because there's two drunk groomsmen that are doing it. I'm like, don't try to. He's like, he looks like he's 250 and drunk. Don't try to pick <laughs> him up. Don't try to pick him up. No, but, uh, but it's really fun because, like I said, some couples are dancing together, but then the song starts slower and then it builds up. Right. With the horns. That's a great, that's a great one too. It is. So we hope you've enjoyed our personal favorites from our music planner list. I'm going to remind you that it's available for purchase in our shop. Our website is theweddingduo.co, not .com, .co. You can find us on TikTok, of course, on Instagram. You can watch this episode on YouTube and some other fun stuff that we do. But we really appreciate y'all. We're going to end this episode the way we end Every episode. I was going to say, we could do this episode next week and I could pick all new songs. <laughs> it's so hard. It was so hard to pick my favorite. That's so hard. It it's is hard. hard. But those were so, that's a good list. I feel like we had a good list. Absolutely. But who cares what we think? It is your day. And Doesn't I always matter. say, don't let somebody talk you into something you really have your heart set on. Or talk you. don't let somebody talk you into something you don't want to do. Or talk you out of something you have your heart set on. It's your day. You can not like any of those songs we just talked about. But there's a million other ones that you could choose. So put your blinders on. Talk to your fiance and pick whatever song or whatever event you want to do because it's your day. Absolutely. We're going to seal it with a kiss. Happy wedding planning. Mwah. Bye. Till next time. Hey, so thanks for listening to our podcast. If you found any of this information helpful and you know someone who may be engaged or is a maid of honor, maybe you could tell them and share it with a friend. Absolutely. So screenshot this episode, share it on Instagram, on Facebook, and tag the wedding duo. We promise to share the love back. Also, if you are interested in more resources or the show notes, you can go to theweddingduo.co. We have one-on-one -on -one virtual sessions, a shop, all sorts of fun stuff. Check it out.